Hey, this is Trout Bitten Tips. Thanks for joining me. So every angler has their favorite knots, right? And the longer you fish, the more you encounter situations where what you usually do doesn't work so well. So you learn from it. And maybe you do some research, or you talk to some friends, and maybe you find a new tactic, or a new rig, or a new knot that solves the problem. That's part of what we love about this game. It's the never-ending set of those new circumstances, new mysteries, and then those new solutions. So let's look at the uni knot because this one knot does a lot of good work for you out here. It's a problem solver and it opens up new opportunities. And with this one knot, you can do almost everything you need to do on the water. With the uni, I tie on flies. I also attach flies as a trailer and then I can back them off too. I create tags for droppers with a uni knot. I connect two lines, even of different diameters or types. I also use a uni knot to attach my line to the reel spool. I use it to attach the leader to the fly line in two different ways. And I use a uni knot as a stopper knot in a slidable dry dropper rig, or as sort of a cider while fishing nymphs or streamers. So that's a lot of uses, and that's a lot of good work that the uni knot can do for you. Let me show you all this in detail. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, I'll first show you the basics of the uni knot. It's not hard. And then we'll walk through all the different ways that we use it out here. Now it's called the uni knot because it's universal, because you can really do everything you need to do with a uni knot. So if you want to simplify your knot selection, this is your knot. So let's walk through. Uh, I just got back from a saltwater trip, so I have a bucktail because it has a big, wide hook eye. And I'm actually going to use a piece of fly line so you can really see the basics of the uni knot. All right, so you're going to go through the hook eye. Give yourself enough slack. Make a loop, simple overhand loop. And then go around and through that loop and around that main line. Through that loop and around that main line. That's three, I think I'm gonna do four here. And pull this. Now what you have is a long loop. You can pull this as tight as you want. Later I'll show you how you can just keep that as a loop knot, but here we're gonna tighten it up. So here we are, we're gonna do it again. I'm gonna go through the hook eye. Give yourself plenty of tag length. Now this time I'm gonna take this tag and go around the back. You can go around the front or the back, doesn't matter. Make an overhand loop. And here you have your main line that's parallel. Main line is parallel. Take your tag, go through. I'm gonna take that tag, go through my loop and around the main line. Through my loop and around the main line. That's two, here's three. Let's do four here. Sometimes you go five or six with thinner lines. You use more wraps with thicker lines. You use fewer wraps. Cinch it down. Nice, tight, everything's good. That's your standard uni knot. So a lot of people will stop right there and cut it off. And <laughs> nice long tag. Um, and, and use this as a loop knot. Right, and of course when a fish eats, that will, that will cinch down and tighten up, but then you can back it off, back to where you want it. This works best in, in thicker materials, I should say. I should also say, I don't use this loop knot. I usually use a non-slip mono loop instead, but this is called the Duncan loop. But again, it's a uni knot. Hey, this video is sponsored by my friends at Precision Fly and Tackle. They're a family owned fly shop staffed by a group of knowledgeable and experienced anglers who, just like you, enjoy spending time on the water with family and friends. Precision has stores in Pennsylvania and Maryland, and they have a great online shop as well. Precision Fly and Tackle carries the largest selection of rods, reels, lines, leaders, flies, and accessories, along with a fly tying selection that never stops growing. From the beginner to the advanced angler, Precision Fly and Tackle can outfit every angler, no matter their budget. So I've been working with Precision for a bunch of years now. They've been a great supporter of trout bitten, and I hope you'll return the favor. Visit them online at precisionflyandtackle.com and use the code TROUTBITTEN10 for 10% off your order. Tell Justin and the crew over at Precision that TROUTBITTEN sent you. So we have a half pint streamer and some people might like to add a trailer to this and then have the ability to take that trailer back off, just slide it back off. Let me show you how you can use the uni knot to do that. You got this pink line so you can really see it. There's two wraps. Three wraps, again, thicker line. Let's just do four wraps. 
pull it. I can tighten it down. Yeah, I can clip this off. But the point here is, it's on there. Now if I want, I can slide it off. And there's again your loop knot too, right? I could, I wouldn't do it on the bend of a hook, but you can see how you can decide where the loop is, it'll tighten up, and then you can back it off. It's a pretty unique thing, pretty cool thing about the uni knot. So one of my favorite uses for the uni knot is an add-on line. Here's a knot in the middle of the line. I wish there was a tag there. So I can add that tag in with a uni knot. I'll show you. All right, I got my knot right there. Here comes the uni. I'm gonna do, in this again, a thicker line, I'm doing four wraps. Tighten it up. And what I do is really pull it down into position and then clip it off. And there you have your tag. All right, so I told you I just got back from a saltwater trip and I was reminded that I can use the double uni knot um, to attach what I was using was 20 pound braid to the mono. I do this plenty of times, mono to mono, sometimes instead of a blood knot, because it works better. So the trick here is don't be shy about your lengths of line. I'm gonna use a lot, because uh, I'm gonna have a lot of length there on the tag, because I'm gonna run this through here. There's two, three, come on, four, five, I'm gonna do a lot, six. On the thinner line, seven, you need more wraps, eight, nine, I think we'll stop at 10 and snug this up, make it have some nice barrels. Don't worry about making it real tight yet. I'm actually flipping, flipping it over. I find it easier to do everything with, the, with all the finger rolls with the right hand. So here I am on this side going one, two, three, four, let's do five, let's do six. Six on this double uni knot. Okay, pull that tight, snug, wet everything, pull it together so it's all gonna cinch down nice and tight. It ends up looking a lot like a blood knot here, but it's a double uni knot and it's just another way to get things done. So another use of the uni knot is attaching the backing to the reel spool. Show you how I do it. So most people use an arbor knot for this, but I like the uni. Now I'm going around that spool twice. See that? I went around twice. Anyway, here we go. I find this one, this is stronger than the arbor knot. <laughs> but the truth is, you're not gonna get to the end of your backing, but you have to attach it somehow. And this is a nice, clean, easy way. I think it's an easy way it's easy for me to remember. I already have this under my fingers, the uni knot. And I think it's five wraps. There we go. Pull that tight. Of course, get in there and clip off that tag and you're, and you're ready. So a lot of the uses for a uni knot end up being called something else. Sometimes it's a grinner knot, the Duncan loop, or in this case, the nail, this nail knot. Um, it's really just a uni knot to attach your leader to the fly line. Here, I'll show you. All right, fly line. Let's say I want my leader on there. Let's say I don't have a loop at the end. All right, here comes a uni knot. One, two, three, four. Let's do five. Pull it tight. This takes a little bit of, I'm sliding it down. It takes a little bit of finesse. Now the truth is, this is never gonna be as clean as a true nail knot but it's a problem solver again. Clip it off and you have a really strong connection. Again, not as clean as a traditional nail knot, but I got it done on the water. Good problem solver. So now that almost every fly line comes with these welded loops, I find the easiest way to attach my leader is either with a clinch knot or sometimes with a uni knot. In the thinner diameters of my leader, if I'm using a micro thin mono rig, for example, I'll use the uni knot so it definitely doesn't slip. Plenty of line this time. Bigger loop. There we go. Now I have room to come through. Keep the loop big. Don't get shy on the loop. Here's four. Again, here's five. 
pull it, wet it, tighten it, clip it, clip it and go. So one of the neatest tricks I think you can do with a uni knot is something I call a backing barrel. I use this all the time. It makes, it creates a, a visible mm, sort of extension to the cider or it can be a cider itself. This is when you're, when you're nymphing. I'll often use it um, even with a regular setup. Uh, I'll use it just for a visible piece on my line. Here's, let's say this is my leader. This could be fluorocarbon, mono, it could be clear. In this case, green, so you could see it again. Here's a 20, piece of 20 pound Dacron. I'll show you how I tie it on. Use this backing barrel. I'm gonna take this, lay everything parallel, right? Just like, just like before, here's my standard uni knot. Two, three, some people call this a grinner knot. I think that's six. And then try to pull both sides even, so there you go. So you get that nice clean barrel. We don't want to leave all of this here. I will point out this slides up and down if I want it to, right? Now what I usually do, let's say my main line's up there and I want to just kind of make a visible cider out of this. Cut it. I'm gonna, all I really need is an inch on that side and let's cut off all of the, what I would call the down tag. Get rid of that. What you have is a nice visible cider. You can see that for a long way away. It's a cider because it draws your eyes to your line. Again, this could be on clear line and that's what I do with it a lot of times. I'll even run that on a streamer rig just so sometimes it's above the water, sometimes it's below just so I can see it. And lots of times too, I'm just going to clip this off. I can still see it, maybe just not as well. So sometimes I use this as a stopper knot in a slidable dry dropper rig. I'll also use it as a bobber stopper if I'm using a thingamabobber or an airlock, something like that, just so the bobber doesn't slide on thinner materials. Again, same thing with the, the slidable dry dropper. We'll do a full video on that someday, but I do have an article on trout pit and slidable dry dropper and you need this backing barrel. You can color this if you're afraid of it being orange and it might scare fish. You can use black Dacron. There's a lot of solutions, a lot of things you can do with this backing barrel. All right, so I ran through all of those pretty quickly, but the important thing to remember is that all of it is just a uni knot. So learn the basic uni knot and then take it over to all the other applications. But the truth is, I don't use the uni knot all the time because sometimes there are certain applications where a different knot just works better. But the uni knot is always there as a problem solver waiting to solve those problems. So hope that helps you out. Fish hard, friends, and have fun. If you have another way that you use the unit, hmm. <laughs> you're definitely, you're definitely going to put that in there. <laughs> oh, no. All right, here we go. Look at do you How do you find shirts? these days. The ads always give me trouble, Josh. Just visit them online at Precision. So I've been working with, shut up, shut up. <laughs>